Tonight is October the 14th, 2014, and uh, out here in the shop, eternally tinkering, I've got to show you something that uh, I hope will help you. This is the uh, old venerable uh, Mark, what is this, a Mark III Dynaco amplifier, beautiful amplifier. I'll turn it over and show you the tops of it, top of it here in a minute. It's a uh, had it for quite a long time. I did change it out once upon a time to this DIY Poseidon board. I really, it's really quite a nice improvement to it. 6AN8s today are just almost impossible to get that are good. But in tinkering with it, uh, one of the features that I recently came across and started using in this Tektronix uh, AA501 spectrum analyzer is to take the uh, input monitor and the uh, function output and run it into the oscilloscope. Well here's what I get. This is my signal right here and this is the error signal. Well I did a bunch of measurements. I've, here's one I, I can just watch on it. Uh, the problem is is if you when you take these two outputs and run it into your oscilloscope then you, you really can't watch the waveform anymore because this device is constantly being probed by this one. I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing here in a minute when I run a signal to noise ratio up here. Anyway, you see that right there? That looks pretty bad. This is power supply noise. That is just, that's just awful. It's absolutely awful. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna put this thing in signal to noise. I've already got it set up. There's what the output looks like. If I change the, uh, if I drive it one dB harder right here, and there's where it is. I'll show you. There's what it looks like if I drive it one dB harder. See, it starts flat topping, so you can see the tops of them. So right before it starts that, so I've got it adjusted just right. This one, this one, this one, you, you can't pay any attention to them, and even this one, because this one's trying to adjust to the output of here. But anyway, this is the answer up here. I'm driving in one kilohertz, and that's the signal to noise ratio, 55 dB. That's pretty bad. Not very good at all. Okay, let's stop it. Let's just go back to AC level and go back to our there, see that terrible noise? Well, I went through and I measured um, ESR of all the capacitors and I did a whole bunch of baloney to it. There they are. ESR is 0 0.46, 0 0.53, 0 0.5, 0 0.43. Good stuff. Code date is 73, 35th month of 1973. So this thing's old, but it's good. When you've got ESRs like that, Replacing the capacitor is not going to fix it unless you do something else. Unless you do something that you're not quite aware of. And let me show you what the problem is. It, this is so dumb, but it's the kind of things that bite us so hard sometimes. And we can't quite figure out what's wrong. And then even when we fix it, we don't know what's wrong. We think we fixed it by doing something. Okay? Now, if you look down in there, this thing is original. I haven't messed with it. I've had this thing for... 20 something years. I don't know who built it. I don't know if it was a factory build or not. It's actually quite nice. I don't have any issues with it, but I haven't changed the filter, filter capacitor. And there it is. That's the way it came. Now watch this. All I'm going to do is grab this thing and wiggle it and watch the, uh, watch the AC Hummel here. Watch it right there. There it goes. See? Went away. It's just not grounded properly. It does have a ground wire. I don't want to stick my finger in this thing because it's on. It does have a ground wire right here going over to somewhere. I think over that tube socket where it's getting a ground. Well, it's not getting a very good one. Here, I'll, I'll show you again. All I'm doing is just, just moving this thing sideways. There's the hum. There it stops. There you go. See there? Let's do the signal to noise again. Signal to noise. Turn this thing back on. There it is, 59 dB. You're not going to hear much hum out of that unless you get it on some really high efficiency speakers. 
but uh, with my right hand I'm going to go back over there and push this capacitor sideways to ground it better. See? Look what it went to. 81, 82 dB. I increased that thing by over 20 dB. You can't argue with that, can you? 88. Hell, that's getting up there like a Mac. Look at there, 91 dB now that I'm holding it really hard. I think that's what they even claim. I think they claim 90 dB. Signal to noise. Damned if that isn't nice, isn't it? All I'm doing is pressing that thing hard to ground. So, can you imagine what some of the, uh, excuse me, had to stop there for just a second. Uh, but there you go. So, what would be a, a likely scenario? Replacing the capacitor, hopefully grounding it better, getting much better results, and coming to the conclusion that the capacitor was bad, and it's not. The capacitor never was bad. It's just something so simple. And these things bite us all the time. Bite us all the time. But unless you've got some pretty sophisticated equipment to check it, you'll never know. So I hope this helps. Check the dumb things. Check the simple things. And uh, you never know. You uh, you might succeed without uh, without going to great expense. And uh, there you go. Hope this helps. Still running right here. Okay, well obviously I couldn't leave this alone. It's the next day here. And um, I've got a, a wire to the capacitor here. It's actually on and running. And here's my uh, signal to noise ratio right there. About 83 dB. Right before clipping. Um, right there's clipping. You want to run it as high as you can. And then uh, there you go. I've grounded it in multiple points. I've got it actually running over to uh, where the center tap of the transformer is, which is physically grounded. It's actually grounded to that tube socket, which is mechanically uh, uh, got brads in it. It's actually a good mechanical connection, but the only thing that fixes it is uh, really grounding the capacitor can in the hole. So I'll do it, I'll watch, I'll, I'll move this thing tight to one side, you know, by flexing it one side and you'll see it change again. See the 83, if I pull this thing hard to one side, see I increase it almost, I drop the noise, the signal to noise ratio, drop it almost another 10 dB. Just by mechanically holding this thing to the side. So I'm gonna solder this sucker in. And I bet that fixes it. So running ground points to different places just doesn't seem to, it, it helps a little bit. Like if I remove this one, I'll show you. This one is to ground, and it's to ground over there too. So if I remove it, it's at 88. Now see, it's, it's pretty intermittent. It's kind of hard to deal with, but if I remove this, see that helped it a little bit. If I ground it uh, over here at the input, uh, did that change it, 86. No, see, I didn't change it at all. So I'm going to solder this thing in. Turn it off, unplug it, let the capacitors drain for a while, short them to ground, etc., and then uh, solder it in really good and, and see if that actually does the trick. I think that's what it's going to take. Okay. Well, I believe that did the trick quite well. Let's get a little light in here so you can, if you can see the solder joint that I made um, right, right there. So I got a bit of a, you know, a good solder, mechanical, electrical connection to ground. And there is my uh, signal to noise ratio. And I'm gonna wiggle the uh, capacitor. It doesn't change. How about that? That is amazing. It's just one of those problems that if you were listening to quiet music, sometimes you'd hear a little bit of a zzzz in the background and sometimes you wouldn't and you wouldn't know why. And you'd always be over here and tinkering with uh, 
with the wrong thing, tinkering with the input connectors, making them worse, or tinkering with the speaker cables, and just tinkering always with the wrong thing, and there it is. Pretty obvious that that was the real problem. Let me turn this thing over so you can see the top side. Oh, I know something else. Uh, I believe when I put the bottom on, it's going to drop even more if that's possible. There it is. Let's see if I can put the bottom on carefully here with it running. I remember when I took it off a while ago. No, I didn't change it. But that's okay. And it's going to fluctuate a little, but that fixed it. Mechanically, electrically binding, bonding this guy to the chassis. Let me turn it over and show you the other side. It's a nice animal. Okay, this is the top side of it. I believe these uh, 6550s KT88s here are uh, Svetlana. It's got an old, um, hmm, I'm not sure who made that 5AR4, probably RCA. And then these are, uh, that's a Telefunken and a uh, an Amperex. So I hand, I've hand picked those over the years to go in there and I used uh, all new components. This resistor right here that the uh, Poseidon board asked for, you can actually eliminate that by putting, I believe, uh, I think I used like two one mega ohm resistors in series and tied them together, I don't remember. But this one is built exactly uh, the way they say. You have to order these kind of little parts right here from somebody like Mouser, uh, maybe these two. The rest of them are just pretty common components. So I hope that helps. I hope you enjoy. These old uh, Mark III amplifiers are uh, still quite nice. I also upgraded my uh, cables recently. I used some uh, RG9BU, some really old stuff, but it's a double, double shielded, silver plated everything. Here, I'll show you what some of this. That RG9 has got two of these. these. These actually came off the same piece of quack. One is inside the other. That is some nice braid. But um, after reading the manual on how to uh, how to use this, the uh, Tektronics suggested that you uh, use shielded cables, which are grounded up here at the uh, at the dummy loads, to reduce any other possible noise. So I did, and uh, that's what I've quietened that amplifier down to. That is amazing. Now that's quiet. Even out of the most efficient speakers, you're going to hear the very tiniest of hiss coming out of that. So I hope you enjoy these uh, audio videos.